Yeah, uh, started. Uh, okay. Yeah, I go ahead and do it. Yeah. And you sure that Tony's coming or? Yeah, yeah. He just he, he <coughs> sent me a text uh, like what a happened? couple of hours ago. He said he will be late, but okay. Uh, cool. Okay. So then, uh, I mean, today I, I wanted to go. Okay, like uh, I say in uh, private, the points that I want to develop again are reality is potentiality that has been there now for uh, some time, right? I mean, last time, time before that. And, um, but I think it's uh, important, actually, the time before that it was, right, that uh, reality includes potentiality, then uh, I said it is actually, you know, a stronger uh, uh, determination, perhaps. Uh, and uh, actually, you know, what I want to say today, maybe I, I put that uh, also on the board, is, uh, not because otherwise we would forget, but uh, uh, and actually this, this has to do, Michael, with what you said about convergence. I was yes. thinking maybe we can look at this in terms also of uh, the implications, right, of uh, this uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, the idea of a uh, utopia. Okay, so, and uh, I will uh, explain what I then with you. I'll talk about that, but what I, have in mind, right? I mean, the you uh, told me in the strict <laughs> sense of the notion of the word is well, no place? Right, no, no place, right. and then uh, I can start that way. I, actually, yeah. I was thinking mm -hmm. of uh, right. what uh, Marcuse says uh, in uh, <clears throat> the, the introduction yeah. of, uh, to uh, NSA on liberation, right? Yes. When uh, he says, uh, actually, I made a note of it because I couldn't read right. and he wanted to make all the books, and that's uh, right. right. I mean, uh, so, <clears throat> and uh, the idea. Speaking about the question of contemporary societies, right? He says the dynamic of their of contemporary societies' productivity deprives utopia of uh, its traditional and real content, right? Uh, so, the, precisely the literal right uh, meaning of uh, no uh, right utopos no right. place. Uh, what is denounced as utopian, he says, is no longer that which has no place uh, and cannot have uh, any place in the historical universe, but rather that which is blocked from coming about <coughs> by the power of the established uh, societies, right? So, of course, I mean, that's a big uh, yeah, uh, jump yeah, from Parmenides and this, uh, to... No, but it's, it's good. Uh, I mean, it's good. Yeah. Right, yeah, right, because of the, the historical universe, but certainly the idea that we want to, again, uh, highlight, uh, go back to in relation to Parmenides, is that uh, uh, as I was saying the other day, uh, what is, uh, is uh, because fundamentally it can be, right? I mean, uh, and mm -hmm. then I want to speak about the question again of uh, the sphere that cannot really be closed. Uh, it is, uh, uh, I, I like, again, because I will use this again, the dialectic of uh, the closed um, and not closed, right? Uh, which is what uh, then uh, gives us the sense. Norman O'Brien has a very nice saying in a book called um, Closing time, close therefore open. Ah, okay. okay. At closing time. Right, right. You know, which is a kind of meditation on joys and uh -huh. others okay. and the end, right. end of temporality. Uh, okay. Yes, you know. yes, and uh, I mean, uh, and that is uh, precisely what, uh, you know, the question of uh, the convergence, precisely. Right. It is a convergence of uh, uh, also of uh, possibility and necessity uh, yields, right? Because uh, it is precisely, uh, and uh, we, we, we can, uh, uh, you know, think a little about this, talk a little about the question of uh, necessity and, uh, and uh, uh, possibility as uh, modalities, right, of uh, being, of course, and uh, it seems to me that one can say that uh, the proper understanding of uh, Parmenides is to look at Parmenides via, through this uh, convergence of possibility and necessity, right. and that means also that this bring, brings Parmenides uh, and, he and Heraclitus very close to one another, right. Right, which is something that, for example, Heidegger says and so on. But this is because the contradiction otherwise, I mean, no one denies, of course, it seems to be there, that, that there is a contradiction in Parmenides. Even uh, Severino, the Parmenidian philosopher we mentioned last time, says uh, as much, right? I mean, uh, so, but it is interesting because Heraclitus builds on all, everything on uh, the contradiction, it seems instead that for Parmenides the contradi contradiction becomes an aporia. Now, what, what I want to say, what I want to argue is that it is not an aporia. I mean, it is not uh, a logical contradiction, an abstract 
contradiction that uh, you know takes away from uh, whatever you know when we think about Parmenides, we think about precisely <laughs> the logic of uh, non-contradiction. But it is actually uh, a real contradiction, just like in Heraclitus. The contradiction in Heraclitus with the river, right? Uh, Right, we step into mm -hmm. and we do not step into the same rivers, we are and we are not. That is not uh, an abstract, right, mental, logical contradiction. It is uh, precisely the contradiction of uh, life itself, of uh, reality itself. So what I think is that uh, in Parmenides, at the end, uh, we had the same type of contradiction, because otherwise, like I, I put it the other day, uh, you know, Parmenides, we could dismiss Parmenides, even as non in not interesting if all uh, we had uh, from Parmenides was this uh, sphere which doesn't move, uh, in which nothing happens and so on and so forth. Now, we can understand uh, the difference here by precisely looking right and taking seriously the question of uh, potentiality that we find uh, in uh, Parmenides' uh, references. I mean, if, even the Peleina, that it is true, he uses that uh, verb to describe, to speak about being in uh, the passage in which he takes issue with uh, people like uh, uh, Heraclitus, right? Those who speak about right, being as being the same and not the same and so on and so forth. But it is still important, there is this uh, unrest uh, at some level and fundamentally also the question that what is, uh, is uh, because uh, it uh, uh, fundamentally can be. Now, I wanted to say also, you know, <clears throat> the other day I just came back to mind and then I went and checked in uh, Zizek, actually, right, in uh, uh, Welcome, uh, the book called Welcome to the Desert of the Rio. At one point he gives, uh, gives this very nice, synthetic, uh, right, uh, description of uh, Agamben's, right, George Agamben's uh, uh, modalities of being uh, with uh, a reference that Zizek makes to remnants of uh, uh, Auschwitz, right? The book by Agamben. Now this is what uh, Zizek says. In terms, he looks at possibility and necessity in terms of, uh, right, our uh, writing possibility of subjectification, desubjectification. I, I want to say before I read this as well, that of course we are with Parmenides and then with Zeno, maybe we move uh, with we'll see uh, Zeno briefly today as well, uh, as uh, Hegel tells us, a, a kind of a external, he says, dialectic, right, objective dialectic, right? I mean, uh, the question of subjectivity then, of course, becomes uh, the question also no, of uh, modernity, mm -hmm. uh, Descartes, and so on. Uh, but uh, it is interesting, right, to look at this, what uh, he says, uh, Zizek says that, uh, he, I quote, Agamben refers to the four modal categories, right, uh, of a being, I believe. Right? A possibility, impossibility, contingency, and uh, necessity, articulating them along the axis of a subjectif subjectification, the subject, the subject, sorry, the subjectification. And then he says possibility, uh, in parentheses, uh, he describes it as to be able to be, and contingency, to be able not to be. Uh, and these are the operators of a subjectification, while impossibility, which is not to be able to be, a necessity not to be able not to be, they are the operators of a desubjectification. Okay, so now I don't want to call attention to these two questions of a subjectification or desubjectification per se, but uh, the modalities, uh, the uh, uh, be able to be, uh, right, be, be able not to be. I mean, these are, first of all, the first two, right, uh, possibility and contingency, they are all part of the same uh, paradigm of contingency, right? Because when one thinks about contingency, one uh, includes uh, the pass possibility per se, possibility as such, and also the possibility not to, right? This is what then. Uh, usually appears as uh, whatever we call freedom, right, which is the indeterminacy, right, what can be and also uh, not be. And then uh, uh, impossibility and uh, necessity, they also belong together. Now, typically, and uh, starting from uh, with Parmenides, it seems that uh, there is a, 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 a sharp and uh, absolute opposition between, uh, con uh, between a, a possibility or contingency and necessity. Now, I'm not denying, of course, that they are completely, you know, that they are the opposite of one another. However, uh, 
they, they, there can also be this convergence between the two. And this is what we see precisely in Parmenides, where again, uh, uh, being is, uh, that what is, uh, is uh, because uh, fundamentally it can be. I would say that the same, you know, that if we apply What's this. What's a for, for Bakian proposition? Freedom is the recognition of necessity. Right, right, absolutely, and then right. Marx also, yeah, right at the beginning of the... Uh, yeah, uh, four o'clock uh, is the first Right, 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 absolutely, you're right, yes. and uh, then uh, the, the beginning of a uh, violent three of capital, right, exactly. and Marx is precisely about that. Right, so the dialectic between uh, freedom and necessity, so right. it's not that one thinks of uh, one right. uh, aspect or modality only, and uh, leaves the, I mean, leaves the other completely uh, behind, and uh, I, I you, you were right about Feuerbach and then Marx, of course, but I want to, I was about to say... Yeah, sorry. No, 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 it's okay, no. but... <laughs> no, it, no, it's perfect. But I, I was about to say that Spinoza, too, yes. you know, the, the difficulty in understanding the question of necessity, you right. know, and the determination, the, that at times Spinoza is read as a, an absolutely determinist uh, right. Uh, right. philosopher. Now, of course, determination is extremely important in Spinoza, as we know, right? All uh, uh, negation, right? Uh, More is, moves uh, is determination. Negation is movement. <coughs> right. You need, you need negation in order for movement. Right. For right. Mo that's right. To yes. So, but but right. there too, in Spinoza yeah. too, it's not that there is no movement whatsoever. And therefore, although right. he made, he in a, a, a explicit, explicit way says that it's not a matter of contingency, however, potency, we spoke about potency right, right, the other day, is uh, again uh, another way of speaking about this unrest right. that we are speaking about, right? The, the unfolding, I mean, from uh, within uh, the immanent no, paradigm that we have uh, in Spinoza, this unfolding of uh, right, uh, uh, everything is uh, precisely a sign of, uh, if you will, uh, the expression of uh, the substance is uh, this, uh, the a result of this unrest and this unfolding. So there is there too, there is a convergence uh, of uh, necessity and possibility. Now, so would you suggest then that the formation of chronatus is a combination of yes, both? Yes, exactly. Right? Yes, okay. that's very okay. good. Yes, okay. yeah, exactly. And so what I wanted to say is that of course then we have uh, uh, in the midst of all this, we have uh, also what then. Uh, you know, because uh, this uh, question of possibility and necessity, I was thinking, I brought down a few things, but I don't necessarily get to read them, but, uh, you know, just a few notes for uh, myself, but uh, that uh, ultimately, you know, it is uh, like the relation between uh, essence uh, and existence that becomes so important, right, throughout, throughout the uh, history of philosophy and certainly also in uh, onto uh, theology, right, becomes then uh, precisely what uh, we uh, usually attribute to God, I mean the description of God. Now I want to say a little about this, if I may, right, because, uh, right, I mean this is interesting too, I mean we saw that, uh, uh, we, we found this already in Parmenides, uh, that it is, is it or is it not, yes, we find out that it is, so that's existence, what? What is it? That's essence. So, I mean, we of course had the same. But then, uh, you know, <coughs> this becomes precisely, you know, what uh, in uh, uh, Christian theology, but not only, in ontho theology, Christian metaphysics, uh, it becomes uh, uh, precisely the description of God. Starting from, if you will, already with uh, the no, uh, ontological uh, arguments, right? right? Anselm, Saint Anselm. I mean, if you start from uh, uh, the premise, uh, if you accept the premise, the God is that. Which is nothing that, higher can be. Right, uh, the, the being uh, the higher than higher which no other being can be thought, right. then uh, this uh, being cannot possibly lack existence because otherwise uh, right. it would no longer be the greatest or highest, and so on right. and so forth. Right. Now, this, which is accepted by, of course, Descartes and then Kant and so on, but even Spinoza. I wanted to say, not that he accepts this, in, uh, but Spinoza begins the ethics how? By saying that the self-cause, right, right. is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, that in which uh, uh, essence... Sui causa. <coughs> huh? Sui causa. 
causes will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the self caused uh, by by this by that which is self caused, which is the substance. I mean, this is the beginning of uh, the ethics, the first definition of a uh, part one, which is called concerning God. Yeah. And then we know that, of course, God, which is the only substance in uh, Spinoza, is uh, and the absolute thing, right? Uh, right? Uh, uh, I mean, the absolute substance, uh, uh, infinite, the absolutely infinite substance, meaning there cannot be another one, of course, and God is nature, nature is God, right? God or nature. And uh, so, the first definition is precisely that uh, uh, he says, by that which is uh, caused, I mean that whose uh, essence uh, uh, involves existence, right? So, we had the same idea uh, um, in Spinoza too, and then of course in Spinoza there is the completely uh, radical move away from uh, the tradition which happens precisely not because of the definition, right? The definition of the self cost is the same that you find uh, in, uh, throughout the tradition. Then the, the rupture, the radical move, is to say that, but you know what, this God, this substance, this God is nature, right? So there is the immanent rather than a transcendent paradigm, and he says uh, God is uh, right, uh, is the immanent rather than transitive cause of all things. But there too, you know, what I wanted to call attention to is this uh, fact that, uh, you know, if we rethink this, uh, I mean, not that we had to completely rethink them, but certainly in relation to Parmenides, if we understand that uh, uh, that which is uh, uh, and uh, what is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, they, they rest, if you will, uh, on uh, the modality of uh, what can be, then uh, we have a completely different picture of, uh, you know, precisely what is called, what Burnett called the body, you know, the, the sphere, the plenum of Parmenides which is, uh, again, quite often. Uh, maybe I said these things confusedly. Uh, I don't know if this is uh, clear, but, but I wanted to say <coughs> the dialectic, dialectical approach, therefore, that uh, I didn't bring it today, maybe next time, but I'm reading this book by the Japanese philosopher Nishida Kitaro, right, which is uh, it's a collection of three essays, an ontology of uh, production. But uh, the second essay is called uh, From the Standpoint of uh, um, uh, Active uh, Intuition. And he has this beautiful, I mean, it's wonderful, because, but uh, this beautiful phrase uh, that uh, he speaks often about the mediation, almost in a Hegelian dialectical way, the uh, mediation of uh, continuity and discontinuity. So, I mean, there is always this. Uh, uh, situation of unrest uh, and uh, in uh, the formation, in uh, even uh, the production of being, right? I mean, uh, the production of everything, the, the, the um, mediation of a continuity and discontinuity, which is really a kind of a <coughs> way of uh, describing the threshold of something. It is the threshold, a threshold which is constant, endless threshold. And this is, again, uh, what uh, we can uh, understand in terms of uh, Parmenides uh, and uh, his uh, sphere, his plenum, that there is a threshold. That, that, that doesn't mean that there is something uh, beyond uh, or nothing uh, beyond. Precisely, he rules out nothing altogether, then we will see how we will uh, look back again and uh, we will uh, find nothing again uh, in uh, the atomists. But, uh, you know, by uh, speaking about being the way that which is, what is the way he does, he really always uh, also includes the idea of the threshold, right? And the threshold is this uh, constant expansion into, not into something, precisely because there is not uh, any other thing, and this is what then Zeno will uh, uh, highlight, uh, also stress in terms of his paradoxes, but it is uh, precisely uh, the dialectic that we said before, right? Uh, we spoke of uh, before, even last time, of the closed and not closed, okay? Or the closed and the open. Uh, I, I don't know if that was too, maybe, too much, I mean, too confusing, but, but it is, uh, again, uh, to, to go back briefly to Spinoza, this again can uh, 
uh, throw light on the question of uh, you know the fact that everything proceeds in uh, the unfolding of uh, Right, the substance, the production, uh, not the creation of everything, the production, everything proceeds from the necessity of the nature of the substance, right? But this necessity is uh, precisely to be understood in uh, relation to this type of convergence with possibility and certainly not with what maybe usually we, you know, associate necessity more, right, with uh, anything with uh, uh, a strong, stronger modality, absolutely strong modality with impossibility, right? You know, this transition is described in Plato's preface to the phenomenology and the transition from substance to subject. Mm -hmm. This is another good, you know, right. you know uh, reference to look at, given what mm -hmm. you're doing here. In Hegel's case, I'm not so sure it's just a threshold but it is a kind of passage, you know, yeah, that's, you know, that's, right, you know, right, that's yeah. happening from the Spinoza's moment to his own, to what you phrased, uh, subjectification and desubjectification. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it is always a threshold in which there is, uh, of course, uh, uh, the gathering that we spoke right. about right. Uh, uh, often, and uh, therefore the idea, again, of this constant, right, unrest. Right, this uh, passage from continuity to discontinuity and vice versa, or uh, as uh, Kit Nishi Rakitaro says, uh, uh, continuity as, uh, discontinuity, discontinuity as, continuity, right, and uh, also the question of time and space, he addresses that question too. So, but in any case, I mean, I, I, I wanted to, <coughs> maybe this has been a bit too, I don't know, abstract or uh, confusing, but, uh, uh, th this is the note that I wrote just before coming, uh, right today, taking the train, and I, I said, it, I repeat in a sense, but I, maybe in a, uh, there, there is no, uh, that was written, uh, you know, quickly as well, but there is no real aporia, there is no aporetic uh, moment in Parmenides, because again, <clears throat> I want to say this because that is seen uh, as a, a problem. I'm not saying, of course, there are always problems, right? But, but, but it's not the problem of that type. Right? It's not that type of problem in the sense of, oh, this then uh, takes away from uh, <coughs> or destroys the logic uh, of uh, non contra Who cares uh, about right. logic or non of identity or non-contradiction after all, right? So the contradiction, what I was saying before, which is there, is not an abstract logical contradiction, but the real one, just like in Heraclitus, there is no exit. That's for sure, that's the idea in Parmenides. There is, uh, that's the point that uh, it seems to be uh, a problem. There is no exit from what is, of course. That's what Parmenides says, because any exit from what is uh, would be a stepping into what is not, and that is impossible. So there is no exit, right? So, and that, so that seems that everything is closed and so on and so forth. But for the same reason, by the same logic, it cannot be closed because then uh, we would have the problem with which then at Zeno deals of the limit. Because the closed is going to be limited, precisely, right? <coughs> so, what is, uh, I repeat here, but because I want to stress this, is uh, because uh, it can be. What can be is, uh, uh, if you will, right, I say, uh, you know, we can understand that what can be is uh, ontologically prior. Right, in a sense, I mean, uh, but they, they are ultimately the same. Uh, you know, the, the question, I didn't bring the only Greek thinking by Heidegger today, but when uh, he speaks about the Moira question and uh, he goes into the question of the same, uh, right, that, uh, that uh, 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 Parmenides uh, speaks uh, about in uh, fragment three, right, that uh, that uh, what is for thinking is the same as what is for being. I mean, it's the uh, same idea here, what, what, because possibility is not simply the question of uh, you know uh, the future, but it is also the question of uh, precisely thinking, right? Thinking and being in that sense. So it is ontologically prior, although I want to say that they are the same. But we have to understand that there is this uh, moment of a uh, potentiality that it is actually the. The, the truth of uh, what is uh, is what can be because otherwise we risk reducing Parmenides to 
speaking about the reality which is only what's there in front of us or at the plane uh, that uh, cannot uh, you know yield uh, anything else and so on so what is is the closed uh, and what can be uh, is the open we might say but again and this is also because the closed and the open the closed and not closed they go together just like continuity and uh, discontinuity so it is certainly the open and the eternal, right? I mean, and we saw that this is actually something that Parmenides not shares with Heraclitus too, right? That the, the cosmos made by no gods, by, by no human being, of course, it's always there, Heraclitus, right? Same idea in Parmenides, uh, the question of eternity is there. Et eternal are both, what is, what could, what can be, but there is a uh, true potentiality, a constant exit. That, that's what I said. So, so the constant exit is this constant passage from continuity to discontinuity, that togetherness, right? The co-immanence of a both, in a sense, right? And so an endless threshold. And then, of course, I mean, in Parmenides, we have uh, the cycle of appearance, right? So it's not that Par Parmenides uh, completely dismisses the fact that uh, things then, uh, of course, appear. I mean, that, that, that's the idea, right? That uh, the, the split, which is then understood as the main uh, metaphysical uh, split between uh, right, uh, uh, appearance and uh, essence and so on. I mean, it is the question of the cycle of appearance, but everything that appears always is, right? I mean, so that, that's the question. And uh, is uh, eternal. So, I mean, I don't know if this is, uh, then uh, maybe I can also, and then we'll move on, uh, go back to maybe some of the fragments, passages, uh, speak a little about, we already have uh, the convergence of, uh, as well, Parmenides and uh, Heraclitus, uh, because I then, uh, I was thinking, but what is this convergence then between, you know, what is the convergence between uh, Heraclitus and Parmenides, uh, usually understood as Heraclitus, the philosopher of, uh, no, becoming and change and Parmenides as uh, the philosopher of uh, being and permanence and so on. Uh, well, we, we can think about precisely the question of uh, also, you know, the difficult question of time and again the question of continuity, discontinuity and uh, uh, the, 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 the moments of, uh, right, uh, um, that no longer of the past, the not yet of the future. They then become also very important, no? especially they're not yet in the uh, late terms block. In the so, I mean, of course, I mean, just to give a, a very simple example, trivial example, I am no longer what I used to be, and right, I am no longer that, and I am not yet what I will be. Right, 10 years ago, 10 years from now, they're no longer not yet. However, for uh, Heraclitus, uh, I am uh, uh, this uh, double knot, the no longer the knot of uh, the past, which is no long, which is not. Now, and uh, the not yet of the future, for uh, Heraclitus, they're both constitutive of uh, what I am now, right? The now in uh, Heraclitus is constituted precisely by the negation, right? And, and that's the dialectical uh, movement, basically, right? Whereby the, what, what is then even with Hegel, what is negated, right, uh, remains uh, within, uh, right, the out the boom in the well, the non is not resolved yet. We're returning huh? to in psychoanalytic uh, vocabulary and, and practice. If the knot is not resolved, you know, then, <coughs> then no longer to the not yet, if the double knot keeps tying itself, oh, you mean it's not resolved, the you, you begin to get the return of the repressed. Oh, and you can see this, you can see this in the political sphere. Yeah. That really is the political unconscious at work. Right. You know, it's, it's interesting in the way you frame this. Temporally, the no longer right. was what was yeah. there in the past. It's returned to in the return of the repressed, right? In a sense, and then put out. You know, we're we're right to life. We're you know neo conservatives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. Because of the fear of the not yet, because that that right. knot has not been really unloosened temporally, and then that plays within a kind of eternal recurrence of the same. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting because then temporality becomes very cyclical, right? You're always yeah. turning on this, you know, in a sense. It, it's a very, it presupposes a very 
cyclical sense of time. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So Which is also what, what no, 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 no. What Nishida yeah. uh, yeah. also yeah. speaks yeah. about. Yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah. no, no. What you say? Then I'll go back. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Because uh, it links the blockage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to read that again before you came. Totally, I meant I quoted the Marcuse passage about utopia from uh, NSM liberation. I mean, we'll go back to that in a moment. But, but the question is, uh, you know, to, to go back to what I was saying, because I, the convergence of Heraclitus and Par Parmenides, of course, this knot, which is, uh, again, the double knot, the double negation, which constitutes the now, yeah. right, without... And, and that, that goes back also to the question of determination, of course. I mean, right. omnia determinatio, right, is negatio, all determination is... Uh, 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 um, all negation, uh, all, all, all the Right, negation. So, I mean, uh, the question is uh, precisely, you know, it's the negation which uh, remains uh, uh, within, uh, and uh, also the negation of, uh, again, what is not there yet. But, but the, that the thing that I like mean. about your line, I mean, this is why I'm emphasizing this, is yeah, that yeah. The, if the political starts to think in terms of K-N-O-T-S as well as the N-O-T's, you begin to see something unfolding here that yeah. can be very, very actively oriented towards the current political situation yeah, and how relevant it is, mm -hmm. including what you see in, in Marcusa as an aporia, right, that he's trying to, you know, propose the right, right. Uh, blocking of, right, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that we, we face this blockage. The know? block, yeah, I mean, right. You know, yeah. Because in a way you can rewrite in the margins there the Tina syndrome. Right, the whole thing. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, no, no, but exactly. I, I was thinking yeah. of that as well yeah. because yeah. when we apply that to yeah. that, uh, you know, the acronym uh, right, and therefore right. the, the, the phrase behind it, <coughs> there is no alternative. What does that mean? Of course, in fact, I was. <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's what I wanted to <laughs> I'm, speak I'm about. I'm just working with you. No, like no, 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 like no, 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 This is, uh, and I, no, no, I, I didn't put it on the board, but it's on my, on my. Uh, <laughs> Not precisely, Good. you know, Good. after the, the idea of utopia, I had in parentheses, because yeah, another world is possible, right? So the slogan that okay. another world is possible, which is the opposite, precisely. Well, the negation of the manifold, Tina. Hmm? many worlds are possible. Many worlds the are possible. The manifold, you know, right, right, right. Man. A different absolutely. Way, different yeah. Time, moment, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and, and this is the idea <laughs> that uh, if we accept, I mean, since we are looking at uh, the pre-Socratics and uh, uh, Parmenides now, and if we accept that interpretation of Parmenides, then uh, then uh, Tina stands, right. but it cannot stand, right? Because of course there is uh, an alternative, right. of course there is an exit, because there must be. And when I say now there must be, that's the convergence of uh, possibility and necessity, there must be, right. because there can be. Mm. So this is the strange thing, because we usually say must or can, right? I mean, possibility, right. necessity, right? no, no. I mean, uh, because yes, the, it is there because it can be there, and Parmenides tells us that as much, but then also it becomes, uh, you know, the truth is that it must be. So it can be, it must be, they converge you know, in the, a very strange uh, uh, way, that's it, the paradoxical, but uh, again, uh, the paradoxical manner that uh, we also have uh, in, uh, in uh, Heraclitus. But if you don't mind, I just yeah, want yeah, to finish. No, 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 because I was saying, you know, remember the example, right? I mean, I am, of course, I am no longer what I used to be. I am not yet what I will be, and so on and so forth, of course, you know. And yet, I cannot become another person, right? My brother, my friend, or a thing. I cannot become this desk. I am still, so Heraclitus is, of course, right? I am the same and not the same. Mm. But that's the porousness, right? Yeah. Uh, Stavides, you know, talks about how aporia is without, you know, without being porous, a state of right. not being porous to influences or uh, changes over time, or right. sort of openness to others, and it's sort of more fluid model right. of exactly. existence. No? Yes. Yeah. yeah, which is always uh, the case, of course. It is uh, precisely the logic of, uh, as Hegel says, uh, speaking, I believe, then about, you know, the logic of the thing. Itself. It's not the logic of uh, no, the, yeah. the abstract logic. Of. But then, uh, you know, the strange thing is that, uh, like I said, for Heraclitus, this uh, <coughs> is not is uh, constituted. But for Parmenides, uh, the same idea. You know, yes, I have uh, entered the cycle of appearance, if you will. Uh, then I 
move out of it, uh, uh, but uh, you know, so uh, uh, the, the form of appearance, if you will, changes. That doesn't mean that it's the transmigration or not. It is, uh, you know, entering and exiting the cycle of appearance, but that doesn't mean entering and exiting uh, that which is uh, and that uh, can be. be. Right, so it's all ultimately the same idea that uh, again, uh, uh, right, uh, we have uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, not the same, uh, what appears and maybe uh, what no longer appears, but uh, of course, I mean, it is the language is different, the logic is different, they are not saying exactly uh, the same, uh, but they are addressing, as we said last time the same uh, problem, the same issue, it couldn't be otherwise from uh, different points of view, but there is this convergence. That, that, that's the, uh, mm -hmm. that's the uh, oh, great right. thing, yeah. the convergence both in terms of uh, these two thinkers and uh, the convergence in terms of uh, these two fundamental modalities of uh, being, okay? Because that, again, uh, uh, possibility, which of, of course includes the possibility not to, <coughs> which is contingency, right. be able to be, be able not to be, necessity not to be able not to be. Mm -hmm. Whereas impossibility, the other modality, impossibility will uh, describe precisely nothing in uh, the context at least of uh, not the philosophy of Parmenides, not the philosophy of Heraclitus, a different idea of nothing, but here it is right, not possible for it to be nothing. Is not and cannot be. So we had the four uh, fundamental modalities of being, which, by the way, I mean, since I spoke about this, I may also say, um, <coughs> but I just want to call attention to, and also say this again uh, for you, because I was actually quoting from uh, uh, Zizek, uh, right, uh, a book of uh, the uh, <coughs> Welcome to the Desert of the Real, in which he goes into Agamben's, he gives a uh, very synthetic, you know, description of Agamben's uh, dealing with uh, the four modalities of being in uh, remnants of Auschwitz. And of course, then uh, Agamben, in remnants of Auschwitz uh, himself, says Auschwitz is the existence of the impossible, uh, the most radical negation of a contingency. It is therefore absolute. Uh, necessity, so it is when uh, the impossible is forced into the real. So there is also a relation that there between uh, impossibility and necessity. And of course, this is uh, <coughs> this touches on, but we don't want to go into that, the concept of the question of bare life, uh, in, uh, right, and, and therefore biopolitics. I mean, we and no, no may, poetry after Auschwitz. Right. In Adorno, in Adorno yes. So, but, but it is, uh, it is so, I mean, to, but to go back to when we recuperate this and we see that there is this uh, precisely Paul's man uh, and this uh, question of uh, the, uh, uh, the possibility of the exit, hello. <laughs> uh, and uh, so then uh, I, I want to go back to the question of uh, utopia, right, and uh, the, the thing that I read, I do this again uh, briefly, okay, because um, I'm not only uh, familiar with that, book by yeah. uh, right. at the beginning, right, I mean, uh, in uh, the introduction, uh, really on the first page, uh, so we had the idea that, uh, I mean, it is not that uh, utopia is no longer that which has no place, cannot have uh, any place uh, in the historical universe, but rather that which is blocked from mm -hmm. coming about by the power of the established society. This is uh, right. Robert Marx, uh, yeah. so he's trying to statement on being and the history of philosophy to the contemporary possibility of the potentiality of utopia by quoting Marcuse right. and how the established capitalist system blocks the possibility of right, right. how we have to think in terms of the exit rather than right. uh, so the possibility no of, exit, right? of the exit even when uh, there seem, seems to be no exit. Yeah, but okay. uh, we are not here to say, right? Yeah, so so you know, usually, uh, Get you involved. No, uh, no, otherwise I would give uh, all the same thing. Yes, definitely. I'll read it. Yeah, great. Okay, thanks. Good to see you.
Okay, so, but that, that's the idea. Even mm -hmm. when uh, the, the, there is no appearance of, uh, no, there seems to be no exit, uh, right. uh, which is right. constructive, precisely right. like in the case of uh, the Tina, uh, right? Uh, the Tina is in the same it's and, uh, just brought up, yeah. yeah. Right, and right, it's right, interesting it is, about who someone would write this too during a period, uh, you know, about eight years <laughs> before the neoliberal moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's really right. anticipating right. this. You know, in a very pessimistic sense, but at the same time, right? Yeah, you know, right. because that is the ideology, of course, of what today now we also more well, usually refer to common it uh, neoliberalism, but mm -hmm. capitalism is such yes, capital, course, right? I mean, uh, how that's, many people even before, yeah. even Marx, right, has to right. deal with that. People right. who say cap no, of course, capital is not uh, certainly not has not always been there, and certainly yes. it's not the end of history. Right. Mm -hmm. The Absolutely. idea of uh, the possibility of uh, an overcoming of the exit. Mm -hmm. Not only is it uh, possible, it, it, right, I mean, a possibility and reality, we see that that's precisely the idea. It is there, it is already there. I mean, in the sense that for Parmenides, what is uh, always is and must be, things cannot come from nothing and go back into nothing. I mean, even the cycle of appearance. Right. It's not a coming out of nothing because nothing is never possible and a going back into nothing, but it is rather, you know, something that always belongs to in, uh, if you will, the realm, maybe that's not the best word, mm -hmm. the realm of being, of that which yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, the realm of what's possible to be thought. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. with that fragment that then comes back, right? right. Yeah. And of course what is possible to be thought is also part of the idea of the potential, what can be precisely as you say, thought. Yeah. So this, this is, uh, I mean, uh, I believe that, and uh, we can uh, speak more about this, and uh, the idea, therefore, of uh, the negation, again, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite something, you know, very important that uh, Parmenides addresses this question of uh, the removal of uh, the elimination of nothing in its absolute form, right? And no one could, I believe that uh, everybody would agree. I mean, the logic is very uh, strict that we have uh, with Parmenides, uh, so it is not a problem that then we have this uh, appearance of uh, the aporetic moment, right? Because the logic still stands, and we will see how for the atomists, for example, I mean, uh, it's not that they deny, what Parmenides uh, already says, uh, but rather than uh, they use a different, as we saw last time, we will see again, concept of nothing, which is me on uh, instead of look on, uh, right? It's uh, relative nothing instead of uh, absolute nothing, which is uh, again, uh, you know, something that we find uh, in other traditions as well. I spoke the other day, I made reference to the great tradition of uh, Taoism in. Uh, China, and actually I copied, because I wanted to share with you as well, uh, the, the whole chapter 11 from the Tao Te Ching, right, which is great, right, which is, I can uh, read it, if you mm -hmm. know, right, uh, or maybe you, uh, although it's uh, handwritten, do you want to, I read it? Sure. Yeah. If you can uh, see, I mean, I, I hope it's clear enough. Is it my handwriting or not? Was right in no, I, 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 I was <laughs> stumbled, you know. Okay, I yeah, could yeah, do it. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. Each, uh, each word. Will okay, I read it. So this is this is chapter eleven of uh, from. Uh? No, no, I would I would be able to read it. But it would, okay, but you it remember. Would, it would be slower than. Huh? Just it would be slower than. Ah, okay. But you remember. Supposed no, to be slower. <coughs> reference. Supposed to be slower. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Acting on actions. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, thirty thirty spokes are joined in the hub of a wheel, mm -hmm. right? But only by relying on what what is not there do we have the use of the carriage. By adding and removing clay, we form a vessel, in the sense of a base, right? But only by relying on what is not there do we have the use of the vessel. By carving out doors and windows, we make a room. But, on, but only by relying on what's not there do we have use of the room. And so, what is there is the basis for profit. What is not there is the basis for use. Which is also, at the end, there is this interesting political 
moment, uh, no, uh, 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 dimension, in la, uh, which is often the case in uh, Lao Tzu. Yeah, I mean, there, there is yeah, a prophet, I mean, he says, you know, use things without possessing and so on and so forth, right? So, but that's the idea. So, but what is not there only because, uh, in, at least, of, of course, that's now, but even in particular in today's societies, contemporary societies, this becomes so handy, so important, because again, what, what yields no profit, right? Especially in the capitalist sense, as we, then uh, is completely overlooked, as if it were nothing, it, it is not precisely, it may be Absolutely. simply yeah. not there, and uh, no, it, it's, it's very interesting, Absolutely. right? Yeah, very nice. Uh, in, in, in another way, in, in, in a sense, this is also like a, a description of a, no, the schizophrenic form of uh, the commodity, right? Uh, the exchange split between exchange value and use value. Right. 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 No, I, you're saying that what, what isn't there or is not yet perceived, right, is the basis for, or is entirely overlooked, right? Is what you're Very saying, often, right? yes. Yeah. Yeah. So but doesn't it also provide the basis for the expansion, you know, of capital into places, into zones of life or whatever that were previously uncommodifiable, you know? Oh yes, yeah. you mean like the continuation of the enclosure? Uh, sure, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, which goes yeah, yeah absolutely, because world. it is... Uh, which goes on all over the world, and it's not just like enclosure in the mm -hmm. classical sense, but also practices yeah. of you know, ways of existing. Yeah, it's the question then of uh, in Marxist, uh, Mar Marxist terms, the question of a, a real uh, subsumption, yeah, right, yeah. the continuous... Territorial boundaries, boundaries on curriculums, right? Territorial boundaries be between pra uh, disciplinary practices. Yeah. No, Constant. that's true. Yeah. Constant. Cool. That's the real enclosure right, right. now. Right. It's going on, the enclosures of thought. Yeah. You know, yeah. being yeah, exactly. this way, <coughs> in a sense. Yeah. Right, right, and that actually this uh, uh, yeah, makes me think of what we were speaking about at the end of the, uh, the meeting that last time, the seminar, right thinking, and then you said, well, of course, what is thinking, and uh, that, that's another question that we can uh, take up again, uh, and there is this enclosure, precisely, again, yes. uh, yeah. at the level of uh, uh, formal institutional education, but also right. more uh, generally. And so, so yeah, that, that, that's the idea. So it is not that, uh, you know, the question of uh, uh, what is uh, not there is, uh, again, uh, not only in uh, the context of uh, Taoist philosophy, he's taking issue with, but also, more generally, we uh, refer to the positivistic, uh, positivist uh, no? take mm -hmm. on things mm -hmm. and so on, whereby what is not there, what, what, uh, what maybe yields no profit, uh, then uh, it's, it's, not impo it's not value. There is no valorization of uh, this uh, empty mm -hmm. space, the void, uh, and what seems to be nothing at all, but it's not nothing at all, right? So, I mean, that, that, that's well, the I mean, question. Under that yeah. heading, uh, I mean, going back to the valorization, I was Tony was also pointing out, you can really talk about the last frontier besides space for the capitalist right. is basically the financialization of nature. This is what the Green New Deal is the structure for, mm -hmm. in some ways. I mean, that really has to be criticized from that point of view. You know, what's really going on in, in the Green New Deal, except for a regulatory sets of agencies so that nature can be financialized. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't, it, because it does no teeth, mm -hmm. you know, as a Green New Deal yeah. in terms of really transformative energy yeah. or a whole new project. So you, yeah. you have to begin to think politically about this in the sense of, yeah, that this is part of the financialization of nature right. that's right. really going on, which is, you know, another, you know, between nature and space, you know, <laughs> yeah. capitalism's already stolen the time. Right. It's stolen <laughs> most of the space, yeah. and now it's really how you financialize, how you set up the algorithms for the future right. mm -hmm. of, of, you know, yeah, domination. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and so when you hear these political programs that come out of policy, they want to radical they really essentially turn into regulatory principles by which everything will be governed. Carbon futures, carbon yeah. trading mechanisms, all this which mm -hmm. will create a whole new derivatives market, mm -hmm. et cetera. So this is always good to keep in mind when we have discussions with people who get excited about the Green New Deal 
or the undemocratic socialism and what it can do. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's the worst of the reformists. It's really that faith, ultimately, yeah. in terms of all po the politics of what I would call the politics of that faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I completely agree. And, and how about then uh, the question, to go back to the question, yeah. then uh, maybe we can also get to right. the text again and think about the question of our thinking that uh, we were saying. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, I mean, I mean, by the same uh, uh, logic and uh, right. a critical, uh, right. no standpoint, I mean, the question of our thinking and not thinking, and uh, so therefore, uh, the, the, no, the, the idea that there too, there must be this uh, uh, positivistic, type of uh, approach, which is uh, not exemplified mm. by things like, uh, you know, the standardized tests uh, and well, so on and so forth. I mean, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, all, all these uh, practices within uh, not uh, institutional uh, education, but even more generally than if one thinks about the media and so on, again, over the emphasis, the spectacular, ultimately, emphasis, the spectacle, right, mm. the society of the spectacle, and therefore, on uh, what is there in uh, a right, positive, uh, apparent form only, right? I mean, uh, forgetting what, what is not there. The question of things, when, uh, you know, when you, you talk, uh, I mean, s s reading slowly, that's super, right? But there, we think in two, right? I mean, the idea, the standardized tests, the idea is, uh, you know, answer as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be punished for making mistakes, but for not answering. But, no, I mean, it's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So it is... It's uh, perfectly with capitalist speed. Yeah. It just, right. it's, it's just kind of like the speed up of the production line. Yeah, exactly. The speed it up of the office work. Yeah. All of this is being conditioned. Right, right. right. Because it, it is precisely the question of speed, as you say. It's no longer simply, and that this is what takes away, together with the financialization, where it takes away time and space right. as well. Right, because then we have the time no, this is what Zeno yeah, exactly. pointed yes. to as these right. sort of measurements, right? Because in order to standardize something and make it predictable and sort of regularized, you have to you right. have to be able to measure it, right? Yeah, and exactly. Yes, the measuring precisely yeah. everything. But from the, a yeah. sort of external, arbitrary almost, right? Right. Yeah. Place. Yeah. And the, therefore, the mismeasure, right? Yeah. James Stephen Jay right, right. It's a good book. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mismatch of a man. Okay, so I mean, but yes, that, that, that's interesting too. Whereas, of course, I mean, uh, it is, uh, and uh, th there is also this question about critical thinking, which is not, uh, you know, of course, critical thinking understood properly, that's the way it should happen, hap right? I mean, uh, when we understand proper properly also the meaning of a critical, the adjective critical, and uh, the the origin of uh, the, the word, right, from a crisis, not from a crisis. Crime, crime. <coughs> that yes, Except that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, a crisis to is the two seven right. Crisis is also right. right, which is a yeah. breaking point of a, uh, right, exactly. And uh, and therefore, uh, the idea of a grasp. That's the threshold in Marx. Yeah, the threshold. Yeah. That's really the threshold, if you read Marx carefully in the manifesto. Constant revolutionizing, constant right, threshold. Right. Yeah. Well, and obsolescence is part of that threshold for the capitalist. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So it's always good to you know, mm -hmm. have that in mind, too. Yeah. 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 Right. So, and uh, in any case, I mean, th these are things that can, uh, you know, be, um, you know, said on the basis of, uh, you know, speaking about this stuff and uh, the question of, uh, therefore, uh, thinking as a grasping, you know, something mm -hmm. which is, for that you need time uh, and uh, empty uh, uh, time uh, in that and uh, space and uh, you, you need that as well as, um, and then uh, uh, this idea of uh, thinking as uh, really, yes, grasping the concept, which is the, mm -hmm. uh, and penetrating the concept. I had to check that there was this school, I think in Chinese philosophy, right, that But you could think about thinking in the Enlightenment as a beginning transcendental and perception. That's where you actually seize right. Right, the knowledge, right? Yes. This is where, where it occurs, right? And right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the, 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 if you know etymologically, the septio means to seize, the 
conceptio means to see around, uh -huh. it's a circumferential moment, right? The mm -hmm. perceptive is to see through, right? right? So we have all these kind of moments of the seizing, you know, if you will. And right. like, yeah. Yes. The limit, right? So to speak. Yes, absolutely. And uh, speaking about the limit, maybe we get into Zeno briefly. I mean, I don't know if we want to go back to some of the text uh, of uh, the fragments in Parmenides, but maybe we can done that, and maybe next time uh, we can uh, move on to Empedocles, uh, Anaxagoras, and then finish with uh, the, the Atomists yeah, and the Sophists. That, um, that it's interesting, actually, that Hegel not says that uh, uh, at the end of uh, the section, so you know, that uh, then uh, it is uh, Leucippus, right, the, one of the, the Atomists uh, and the Sophists, who uh, somehow, if you will, uh, uh, I mean, some, if I remember, somehow, um, in, not inherit, but, you know, continue, uh, in a way, uh, the dialectic and metaphysics of uh, Zeno, perpetuate, right? I mean, uh, this is uh, in the Hegel uh, text, page 277, the Batman 278, that's the end, uh, then we move uh, back to, but let, let's begin by looking at this, which is interesting, because then we finish with, um, with uh, the atomists uh, and the sophists. And uh, this is actually kind of uh, strange, if you will, uh, uh, especially uh, thinking about the sophists as perpetuating right, what Zeno does, but we will see. So Zeno dialectic is limited, that's the uh, last four lines on the right, page 277, um, to metaphysics. Later, with, with the sophists, uh, it became general, okay, so, we, we uh, here leave uh, the Eleatic school, which perpetuates itself in uh, Leucippus, the atomist, and uh, on the other side, uh, in the Sophists, in such a way that this last extended the Eleatic conceptions to all reality and gave to it the relation of a consciousness. Okay, so we can uh, keep this in mind when we go, when we get to the Sophists, but it, it, this is very interesting. Right, because uh, of course then uh, their philosophy is completely uh, different in many ways, first of all because they completely you know, uh, erase uh, the question of a pre-Socratic philosophy and mm -hmm. ultimately the truth is what is uh, uh, made. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, we'll see that. So, but I don't know if uh, maybe we should begin by reading some of, uh, maybe a few, a couple even of uh, the <coughs> fragments, the <coughs> Maybe two particular. I want to read uh, fragment six on page 68. Uh, this is from uh, Aristotle's uh, Physics, right? So it's a passage from the Physics. Uh, um, and then uh, maybe uh, 10 on page 69 and 12. Uh, so, uh, three maybe, on page 70. So the famous uh, paradoxes, right? Zeno's paradoxes that uh, uh, ultimately are, you know, um, the result of uh, like drawing the, the implications or taking uh, Parmenides to the, the, the logical conclusion, so to speak, right? I mean, uh, um, maybe you want to read this, Tony, yeah. six. Uh, this <coughs> is from Aristotle? Uh, Aristotle's physics. Physics, book yeah. six, number nine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Zeno's arguments about mo motion which present difficulties for those who try to solve them are four. First is the argument which says that there is no motion because that which is moving must reach the midpoint before the end. <laughs> and, the and the second? Oh, the next one. The second one. <laughs> the second is the one called Achilles. This is to the effect that the slowest as it runs will never be caught by the quickest. For the pursuer must first reach the point from which the pursued departed, so that the slower must always be some distance in front. This is the same argument as the dichotomy, but it differs in not dividing the given magnitude in half. Okay. Well, actually, the, the first one uh, mm -hmm. is uh, in, the, in this edition, the newer edition, mm -hmm. longer, right? Because after what you read, uh, you uh, stop at the, 
right yeah. or because they are in the right they're midpoint. Separate fragments here. Huh? Yeah, they're separate fragments. Separate fragments. No, but yeah, they're, yeah, they're separate, more in the But it's in from six. the same book and the same same uh, continuation of right. Aristotle and the physics. Right, yeah. right. No, they continue. Yeah, each other. they are two different fragments, but uh, just you also Here. see it's. Yeah. Uh, right. you want me to read it? Yeah. There are four of Zeno arguments about motion that present difficulties for those who try to solve them. First is the argument that says that there is no motion because that which is moving must reach the midpoint before the end. It is always necessary to traverse half the distance, but these are infinite, and it is impossible to get through things that are infinite. And this is, uh, right, yeah, so it's not Different. there, but... No, that's bad. But There's like I, another I line. I like that better. <laughs> yeah. No, it's much clearer, actually. Much clearer, yeah. Translation. yeah. Right, and then, uh, yeah, exactly. And then uh, Hegel, no? Yeah. Uh, speak so much about mm. this, in a sense that uh, I don't know what uh, your right. um, impression was, but it seems at times that Hegel is speak, speaking more about his own philosophy than about <laughs> Zeno, although at Both times that he gets it too. <laughs> right, but uh, of course there is uh, a difficulty, but uh, the idea that uh, you will never, right, that the, the, the question of the division, the dichotomy is the question of the division. Um, and therefore of the limit, as uh, Hegel calls attention to. In uh, Zeno, the question is the question of the limit. Maybe we can uh, see something from um, Hegel. I mean, first of all, then we'll, uh, we are going to read the others. Uh, he says that uh, uh, at the beginning of the section on Zeno, uh, 261, he says that uh, what uh, especially characterizes Zeno is the dialectic, which, uh, properly speaking, begins with him, uh, just like he said, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, philosophy in proper begins with Parmenides, now dialectic with Zeno. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, he gets into this question of uh, the division, where exactly... Well, what's interesting, too, we only have the proposition, according to Hegel, that nothing has no reality, and is not at all, and thus what is called origin and disease disappears. So this is an early attempt to get rid of the search for origins mm -hmm. right, in, in many ways. You're only right. dealing with a topos in the Heideggerian sense, mm -hmm. or you're dealing with a point of departure as in the Marxist sense, mm -hmm. right, right, instead right. of the search for origins that Foucault criticized so well in his own, you know, right, yes. historical, uh, you know, mm -hmm. his own historicism. Right, so, and uh, in, in a sense, I mean, from what you say, uh, here already, there is a, a kind of link to the sophists, uh, in a sense, as well. Very early, yes. And, uh, right. and, and so, I mean, uh, I mean, because we are moving toward the end of a yeah. series yeah. of seminars, but, so the question, it seems that ultimately the uh, first, the initial question of uh, uh, pre-Socratic philosophy is uh, at this point almost forgotten. Uh, the question, what is it? Uh, um, I, I don't know. I mean, that's the question of uh, the origin. And then uh, we had the other questions. Uh, the, is it, is it not? Uh, the why? The question why? And uh, okay. Then we can go back to this. It's interesting that, for example, Burnett at one point, but then speaking about Anaxagoras and making it, uh, establishing a link <coughs> between uh, Anaxagoras and uh, Anaximenes, at one point, uh, speaks of uh, Thales uh, as, uh, you know, someone going back to the crude uh, philosophy of uh, thinking of Thales. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, mm -hmm. right? So, but in any case, I mean, one thing that I want to pay attention to, then we read the other fragments by about Zeno. In the middle of page 264, there is this uh, important moment about Parmenides, and Zeno Parmenides does shows, it's almost in the middle of the page. What page, I'm sorry? Uh, 264, uh, that, uh, uh, that in his poem, that all is one, Zeno, on the contrary, shows that uh, the many cannot be. So from a different point of view, Hegel says uh, they say uh, the same. And uh, but the question of, uh, you know, that we saw in, uh, in uh, Zeno uh, is uh, uh, dealt with by um, 
by Hegel, maybe here, right? I mean, on page uh, 266. question of uh, division, uh, which is really, I believe, uh, very difficult, maybe even uh, um, unnecessarily, you know, so, I mean, in, in the sense that uh, I, I don't know if uh, this uh, particular paradox by Zeno is convincing uh, in, in any way, especially the Achilles and the, the you know, the Tartu. I, I don't know, I never found that compelling like the other two paradoxes that we will see. But uh, Hegel says uh, um, uh, on page 270, uh, line uh, uh, 3 from uh, the top, right? Uh, div divisibility is uh, uh, as potentiality the universal. I, I think that this is important because uh, it goes back, right? We can go back ourselves to the important question of potentiality that we were looking at, and therefore also the question of the limits, which is the question of Fulzino, and uh, the question of the threshold, right? The limit which always steps into something deep, and therefore there is this uh, kind of no, uh, constant exit and this uh, constant uh, moving of uh, this constant, uh, to use the expression we used before, the concepts by uh, Nishida, the continuity and the mediation of continuity or, uh, of, and uh, discontinuity. This, then uh, I, I skip a few lines, uh, and if you see with, uh, two lines, then uh, he says, I can mm -hmm. divide matter into infinitude, but I only can do so. I do not really divide uh, it into infinitude. Mm -hmm. This is infinite that, uh, sorry, this is the infinite that no one of its moments has uh, reality. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. I can, but I don't, right? I mean, uh, again, uh, for whatever that, you know, it's kind of difficult, but certainly it points to the relation, which is also a relation in a sense of uh, sameness between uh, uh, reality and potentiality, between uh, what is uh, and what can be. Again, here too, the fact that I can uh, means that it is part of uh, right, something that we can call no, the real. So it, it's not something that I cannot do. I can, but I don't do it. <laughs> Which is also, you know, uh, I mean, uh, interesting in other ways because uh, it, it, it is the question of uh, impermanence too, the question of how. Uh, even, uh, you know, what, uh, what, what is now, what appears now, is uh, always, right? Because the now in Parmenides becomes this always now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also, if you will, uh, you know, I mean, it's not that we had to then uh, uh, put, you know, throw everything together in the same, uh, you know, combine everything, but uh, it is also, in a sense, what we saw the other day with Leibniz in the question of contingency, that uh, uh, it is not the case that all possible things uh, must uh, actualize, right, uh, will uh, uh, exist uh, in actuality. I know, I know if you have uh, any, any thought about this, but it's uh, interesting. Uh, And then uh, at the end of this paragraph, in the middle of uh, page 270, he says, uh, the, that's the last sent sentence, what is represented either uh, as such or as an image or the conception is not a thing, it has not been, and yet it is not nothing. Mm -hmm. Again, another not moment of uh, this con exit and this threshold. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, he goes back to this idea that I can, but I don't mm -hmm. deny that. Uh, this is uh, actually after the semicolon, uh, in the next paragraph, uh, the line, uh, right, line uh, two in the, in the next paragraph, just as I do not 
right, actually divide, uh, he was speaking about the infinite before and then a space now, and th th that he's addressing that difficult uh, question, the paradox in Zeno. Just as I do not actually divide uh, space, uh, then uh, he says, neither does the body which is uh, in motion. Mm. And then uh, uh, I skip two lines, he speaks about continuity here, but then after again uh, the semicolon, before likewise, time is not pure negativity or a discontinuity, but also continuity, right? I mean, uh, the, mediation that I was speaking of in terms of, uh, in any case, uh, Nishira Kitaro, who uh, um, has a dialectical right, uh, approach, but the question of continuity and uh, discontinuity together. It is not only, it is not pure negativity or discontinuity, but also continuity, right? So this movement and... Uh, uh, And then the next sentence, both are manifested in motion. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You want to read more? Yeah, in which the notions have their reality for ordinary conception. Pure negativity as time, continuity as space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, yeah, and then he goes on uh, speaking about motion again uh, in the sequence of both moments in the unity. And uh, um, we go, um, he, he speaks about the unity of uh, negativity and continuity, and then uh, uh, the, the last part, the last uh, five uh, right, lines from the bottom, if we represent space or time to our, ourselves as uh, infinitely divided, we have an infinitude of points. Mm. But continuity is present therein as a space which comprehends them almost like a univocal round, mm -hmm. in a sense, right? Uh, a notion, however, continuity, uh, sorry, as notion, however, continuity is uh, the fact that all uh, these are alike, and thus, uh, thus, in reality, they do not appear one out of the other like points. Mm. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the question of uh, the division of space, really, in the half of uh, space, which seems to be the problem in, uh, I hate to say, I never really uh, grasped that, I mean, it's, uh, that paradox uh, the, uh, the, in, uh, in uh, Zeno, like others. But here in uh, Hegel, uh, page 271, uh, how can I call attention to this? It's more or less uh, like, uh, like line uh, 10, maybe, see uh, the, the sentence that begins with we, the end of the line, we must, right? We, we must say that there is no half of space, for space is continuous. And this is maybe when, uh, where Hegel becomes a little more clear, because he himself is, uh, you know, it's very difficult, the explanation that he offers of uh, Zeno uh, before. So, um, space is continuous. A piece of wood, right, may be broken into two halves but not space, and space only exists in movement, right? So it's space and time. And then uh, he goes on, speaks, goes on speaking about an endless number of points, i.e. of the infinitely uh, many limits, and thus cannot be traversed, right? And that's the problem with uh, Zeno, apparently, and the question of the limits. So that op always opens up into something that uh, in itself is always uh, in turn subject to further division, right? That, 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 that's the problem. You never end uh, the division because you always can divide uh, the next half that you find mm -hmm. and so it tends to remain. I mean, it's, uh, okay. So maybe we want to read the other, uh, Paradoxes by uh, or about the, you know we saw this by uh, in uh, uh, Aristotle's no uh, physics, but this is also ten. I know if Josh, you want to read it. Ten uh, sure. page six nine. This is also from uh, uh, Aristotle's physics. We say no. ten. Uh, 
Zeno makes a mistake in reasoning. mistake in reasoning, for if, he says, everything is always at rest when it occupies a space equal to itself, and what is moving is always at now, the moving arrow is motionless. Right, so this is beautiful, and this is, mm. I believe, much more, no, mm. uh, it's much uh, easier to understand, I mean, it's more ready to be mm -hmm. um, But there is a, another, another yeah. Yeah, sorry. The third argument is the one just stated that the arrow is stopped while it is moving. This follows from assuming that time is composed of nows. If this is not conceded, the deduction will not go through. Mm. Yeah, and that, of course this opens up a big, no, very interesting question, I mean, on, on the one, but also maybe this can also be, uh, you know, uh, considered from uh, the, the, the what we were speaking about today, about the, the convergence no, of right. uh, Heraclitus and uh, mm -hmm. Parmenides, precisely in terms of their uh, different uh, uh, understanding of now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems that, of course, Zeno, student, uh, right, I mean, Parmenides student, and uh, uh, he, uh, right, I mean, then uh, draws the implications, and uh, it seems that uh, he is uh, precisely looking, looking at uh, now, is now as uh, the Parmenidea now, right? I mean, uh, it's an yeah. always, so, the, so you can move uh, from, whereas the passage that we had, uh, the continuity and discontinuity, the dialectical movement that we had in Heraclitus, uh, going from uh, what is not to mm -hmm. what is, uh, and from what is into what is not, is missing. However, ultimately, again, it's the same idea. Right, I mean, again, of course, because this could be represented very easily, right? I mean, uh, each point, uh, every time that the thing, a body occupies a space equal to itself, is at rest. Of course, right? I mean, I'm at rest now, but if I move, every time I move, any, every step, but even mm -hmm. half mm -hmm. of the step would be, uh, and so I couldn't move yeah. at all, because even half of the step that I take yeah. could be divided into halves, and then the other half again, and again and again to infinity. Mm -hmm. I, I don't move, and I am stuck in this uh, now and uh, in this uh, position, right? I mean, yeah. that's basically the idea. Which is interesting. Now, I don't know if, um, uh, um, maybe because I, I often think so, but isn't that the, the principle also, no, of uh, the motion picture? Yeah, I was just thinking of Edward Mybridge. Uh, who was the photographer, right, who uh, settled the controversy about if the horse's legs all leave the ground at the same time. Uh -huh. He did it by using the, the camera. Uh, yeah. Stroboscope. Because it yeah. is stroboscope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, like a, the stroboscope was like a, uh, the, the tool that they used. The tool? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was at the early, you know, the dawn photography. The dawn the photography. Right. Uh, the okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. The but it, because it's always not the still yeah. uh, mm -hmm. image that then uh, becomes, uh, yeah. that gives, no? no. The, impre the impression. Yeah, oh, the impression of movement. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. right, so, but uh, when one breaks it down, it is, uh, in a sense, what Zino is speaking about, mm -hmm. about yeah. it is uh, still and not yeah. moving. Yeah. So it is uh, in, in rest and not right. in motion. That's interesting. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, in a sense, of course, this is a, a wonderful uh, mm -hmm. paradox, which then uh, ties uh, in together with the next one that we are going to read, which is wonderful also, because uh, here we have uh, the right in Zeno, the negation of motion, and therefore of time, right? This is the now, which is the timeless uh, now, timelessness in, uh, right? Parmen, this is the always now, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, in the next one, there will be uh, uh, the negation of space and place, right? So he denies, he negates both time and uh, space. And this seems to, in a sense, right, support the idea of, uh, you know, his teacher's uh, 
Parmenides' uh, sphere is an uh, unmovable fix. That we saw the other day that that's what Parmenides himself says in the poem, right? I mean, it's not that right. someone is making this up, it's there, fixed, full of itself, I mean, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, full of what is, uh, and, uh, and so on and so forth. But, uh, so, I mean, it seems that it is a description precisely of this, uh, but uh, again, uh, you know, one may ask the question as to whether it is simply by, uh, simply stating the paradox or, uh, you know, critically calling attention to the paradoxical mm -hmm. no? uh, nature of uh, the real in, in this sense. I don't know if that makes sense, right? but, but because it is, uh, you know, something that, of course, usually we don't think about. I mean, uh, we assume that we move uh, from one place to the other and so on and so forth, but in reality, there is this, you know, interesting question of uh, what appears to be the case and what, <coughs> and what in fact is the case, right? So that, that's basically the split again, uh, which then becomes the, you know, why, what? That's paradox. <laughs> paradox. Right. <laughs> which then becomes the metaphysical thing, right? The, yeah. the question of metaphysics, the split between, uh, again, uh, what, yes. Well, I mean, do, as you know, the dots are means a thing that we yeah. agree, so yeah. the paradox so is always something that has to go into epistemic if it's mm -hmm. going to become knowledge, so mm -hmm. you know, right. the paradox right. is not especially a, you know, a bad thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you, know, you can have the right and the you know, uh, second opinion as in Socrates on the way to mm -hmm. epistemic. Right. So mm -hmm. these are always the steps. Uh, right, right, no, but indeed, yeah. 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 it is so, and uh, one, one may actually Built on this in the sense that uh, opinion is always fluctuating and moving. Right. Not only do I change uh, my opinion, but people, of course, get right. different. Episteme, which is uh, right, <coughs> that which stands on itself, right? It is ultimately a moment, right, which uh, uh, occupies, if you will, uh, the place uh, equal to itself. It is the standpoint which becomes the only one, problematically, but that, that's basically the idea. Mm -hmm. But certainly, I mean, in Zeno, we have uh, the, the re, uh, uh, you know, a way of a, 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 a description and a way of a, a re, uh, proposing, right? I mean, uh, the main uh, thesis no, of uh, Parmenides, precisely between uh, mm -hmm. the difference between the cycle of appearance, between what seems to be, between sin, what seems to be the case, and what uh, indeed uh, uh, essentially is the case and never changes, because otherwise, if it changes, it would become that uh, we saw this the other day, right? I mean, uh, the, the only uh, thing which is different from what is uh, would be what is not, and that is impossible, and therefore it must be the same uh, with uh, itself. So, without motion, and uh, ultimately, as we will see from the next uh, fragment, with uh, the denial of a place as well. And then we can see also in some of the things that Burnett says, but. Uh, uh, you want to say more about this fragment, uh, uh, again, fragment of this passage from Aristotle's Physics 10? Huh? No? Sh should we uh, read, uh, so, uh, so the, 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 again, uh, we saw that uh, the arrow, right, the arrow, the moving arrow is actually uh, not moving, no? Mm -hmm. Most of mm -hmm. in a uh, in, uh, true, uh, in, uh, in, in essence, mm -hmm. really. Okay, <laughs> so then uh, this one is beautiful. Again, uh, uh, this is, uh, it's interesting the one you read before, just that mm. Aristotle introduces that by saying that uh, Zeno makes a mistake. Right. And says mistake. <laughs> but this one also seems to be, I mean, it's still Aristotle. No, no, sorry, this is Simplicius writing on Aristotle's physics. Yeah. 12? Yeah. 12, yeah. <laughs> More similar. Um, if place exists, where is it? For everything that exists is in a place. Therefore, if place exists, then place is in a place. This goes on to infinity. Therefore, place does not exist. <laughs> mm -hmm. right, this is nice. Uh, also, maybe the most uh, beautiful, this one. Yeah. But again, uh, this, uh, again, uh, is it simply, you know, uh, uh, an operatic kind of uh, situation, operation, even, uh, or is, 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 
or is it rather that you know the paradox is uh, and of course it is that way uh, trying to call attention to uh, precisely the nature of uh, uh, the real the, and not only the real as that which is in front of us but uh, um, more generally as that which is uh, and can be one way of uh, you know certainly elaborating on this because that's that's what he's speaking about is the question of the what then becomes no the question of the brand the yeah of the brand. but also what what is is inextricable right from where what is yes right yeah exactly yeah. so yeah and that's very important because even if we think about the uh, concept of uh, expansion right mm -hmm. in the universe uh, in infinite ex in mm -hmm. expanding into what into there is no what into right. which it is expanding it is the expansion mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the expanding uh, itself you yeah. know it's this unfolding thing which is groundless there is no place mm -hmm. ultimately right mm -hmm. precisely uh, the way you put it was really can you say that, that, that uh, the word there is uh, and, uh, <laughs> so the is is inextricable oh. from where oh yeah. yeah what is is inextricable from where what is is yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So the, the, there is no, there is no where, where, what is, uh, is, uh, but it is uh, this kind of, uh, and unity would not be the right word, but it is this uh, type of, uh, uh, precisely, I, I'm going to use now a word by Simone Don, right, transduction, transduction, mm -hmm. which by the way, Nishida Kitaro, who mm -hmm. I mentioned before, also uses, but for uh, Simon Don, and because we started with the question of individuation, right? I mean, this individuation, which is ultimately an impossible individuation, mm -hmm. is another way of saying mm -hmm. what you just said, is uh, precisely this constant, never ending movement of transduction, precisely, which is another way of speaking about the mediation of a continuity and discontinuity, mm -hmm. this, this thing this thing that never ends, and it is not anywhere uh, as a, a separate kind of a ground or a separate kind of place. There is no place. Mm -hmm. So I believe that this is actually... Uh, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. me, th this is the, the paradox that more than, uh, you know, the, the one that makes sense most. I mean, the one about motion is also very really interesting. But uh, yes, uh, mm. therefore, place does not exist. And uh, I don't know, maybe we. I, I don't even know what I. Oh, maybe we can more or less, you know? You may have said maybe we end early today. We can end early, yeah, sure. No, I mean, uh, we have more. I mean, we can go. Do you feel comfortable? I don't know if you want to get into yeah. now, no? Uh, and pay for this now, but maybe we can now. Uh, no, let's, let's save it. Let's save it. Right. Yeah. 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 right. So maybe if we yeah. want to go back to some of, or maybe look briefly at some of the points, but I, I think that what we saw in uh, Hegel was very important. But uh, in uh, uh, Good Night, let me see if there is something that maybe we should also mention. Well, I because think one thing that uh, you know we could talk about, I mean, this is for the future too. Mm -hmm. is the poetics of the tragic, these are the more about uh, fate, destiny, and all of these things. Where does the tragic sense of life really come in here, you know, ultimately, and, you know, the whole notion of, of the tragic, which is so prominent in the, you know, poetics of Aristotle, so, 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 um, um, you know, prominent in Nietzsche philosophy and the tragic age of the Greeks in which, you know, Nietzsche claims that philosophy is born out of decadence, out of the decline, you know, from tragedy into the everyday, into the civil, et cetera, as a, as, a, as, a, as a moment. So maybe we can maybe try to make, I mean, since today's theme in some ways was about convergence, to kind of think that yeah. alongside, you know, as we go forward. The tragedy. Wasn't, wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, tragedy, tragedy privileged in Aristotle because they lost the books to comedy? Uh, yes and no. I mean, you know, we, when I was at Johns Hopkins, we were thinking there were some people in the classics department that said, why don't we write Aristotle's comedy? And then we 
make a fortune where you can find it. <laughs> so we didn't know that this fucking manuscript of uh, Aristotle, the, com- you know, the comedy. Yeah. But I mean, you know, in a way, um, no, it's interesting because Nietzsche is very good on this in terms yeah, yeah. of philosophy and the tragic age of the Greek and also the notion of fate destiny, yeah. eudodemonia, you know, as well-being, yeah, all yeah, of these yeah. things are connected very much to the question of, you know, in your language, singularity, mm-hmm. maybe subjectivity, yeah. as well as, you know, uh, you know, following yeah, up right, on right, some absolutely. of the pre-Socratic notions. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And the yeah. question, of course, yeah. of uh, destiny, uh, yes. as you say, fate, uh, we, we right. saw that already, we can go back, we saw yes. that already right. with, right. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> sorry, Parmenides, yeah. especially, and we saw one, of the ca- one of the is, ca- 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 categories of madness, I think, mm-hmm. in Greek, really comes from being <coughs> unable to face one's destiny, mm-hmm. being able, unable to face one's fate. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and this was really the, the, the problem, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, in any case, also destiny, we saw in right. the sense right. of. Uh, right. Uh, uh, ultimately, uh, uh, eternity, that which always remains, that which always stays, right? The right. absolutely staying. And uh, the, the question, of course, then from the human point of view, what do you say being uh, able or not able to, you know, withstand the situations? And then, of course, you, right. as you mentioned, eudaimonia, right? But that's the idea in uh, eudaimonia, which is not the, the word in, uh, like, uh, the ethics also by Aristotle or uh, um, what we used to say, happiness, the good life. Or uh, right, well being. Yeah. Well being, to be good is, right. uh, you is a uh, good, a diamond, right, spirit. To be in good spirit, right. 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 even right. in the face of adversity, because, right. I mean, it's easy to be in good spirit when things go well. Mm. But in life, of course, there are things, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, at, uh, even in, uh, uh, in uh, situations of difficulty, one has to, and that, that's the formation then, of course, of character. Yes. In, uh, uh, and Aristotle is in this in a way. He does. Right. Marcuse even says, you know, character is fate. Yeah, uh, you know, he does. Marcuse goes back to this notion. Hmm. Yeah, it, it does. And, and uh, if you, right, right, because if you recall, I mean, uh, in uh, later on humanism, right. uh, and we that's spoke right. about that, Heidegger right. yeah. uh, uh, has this wonderful uh, moment in which, right, he, uh, re uh, translates um, Heraclitus' uh, important uh, fragment, right, which is about the, the idea that um, um, uh, let me find it that um, the ethos of a uh, man, right, right. is. Uh, uh, And then uh, there is the word diamond. Now, now I, I, I can't remember exactly, but let, let me see um, if I find it this way. Yeah, it's Heraclitus. Yeah, it's Heraclitus. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Um, a person's character, right, is uh, his uh, divinity. A person's character, right, is his divinity. And then, mm. uh, of course, I mean, that's the, the question of uh, how. Heidegger says that it is really the place, uh, the uh, abode, uh, right? Of, uh, um, mm. That ethics, ethos, uh, says it's not simply character in the, um, you know, commonly uh, accepted uh, sense, right? But it is really the, 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 the dwelling place mm. of uh, uh, anyone, fundamentally, right? So in any case, yeah, we, we can speak more about mm-hmm. that, but, but I think we read no, that, that more yeah, we did, yeah. from now. Uh, okay, so then, uh, yes, I mean, maybe we can uh, get into briefly the question of destiny and the tragic also with uh, Empedocles uh, and his death uh, since he mm-hmm. died uh, by suicide. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, that is, it's part of, uh, no, it's interesting mm-hmm. too, and all the you know, Okay, so I, I don't know, maybe we can uh, close. Uh, We're up there. Uh, yeah, good. Good. Thanks, Bruno. So you were saying you yes. in bed or please for next week? Yeah, and don't accept us. Okay, no more things. Huh?
That's it for Zeno? Oh, no, we can go back, references, yes. but I, I, so I, I wouldn't have other things, to, uh, fragments to read uh, by Zeno. Yeah, it's a short I, chapter. Yeah, those are yeah. yeah. Right, so Anaxagoras, uh, Empedocles, and then uh, the, the last week, right, we will do the, the Atlas and uh, the Sophists, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we should read the Hegel on, uh, uh, on those guys too, or? Right, right. Okay. Uh, on Same the, deal. Yes, okay. on, uh, Empedocles. Actually, on Empedocles also, good night is special because uh, Hegel is dismissing uh, of a dismissive okay. of uh, Empedocles. 